everybody. Welcome back to Great Northwest Weaponry. This is Thomas, and today we're celebrating having just hit 5,000 subscribers. Another milestone down. Thank you guys so very much. To celebrate, I wanted to go over something that uh, has sparked some interesting discussion on the channel. The story of Sergeant Alvin C. York and his actions at the Meuse Argonne Offensive in the First World War. Today, what I'll be doing is uh, first I'll be going over you know the story as it is known, and then we'll be taking a look at the guns which were attributed to him. We will be shooting each of these. Actually, went out and shot them earlier today, and I'll be cutting that in you know at the appropriate moment. So we're going to start with the story, then we'll take a look at the pistols and talk about why uh, the Luger P08 and the 1911 both get attributed to him at uh, for different reasons. The pistols a little more straightforward. Rifles, it gets a little more complicated, and we'll be kind of closing out the video with that. But anyway, the story as it is known. On October 8th, 1918, a 17-man unit of Americans came under fire by German machine guns at the Meuse Argonne Offensive, once again, as stated just a few minutes ago. Amongst these men was then-Corporal Alvin C. York. In the first moments of the outbreak of fire, nine of the 17 were killed outright, including the commanding officer, which would then leave York in charge. York would take out at least 20 German soldiers, most of which with a rifle. And again, there's debate over whether it was a 1917 or a 1903. And then uh, closing that out with, I, th I think it was something like six with his 1911. Again, there's a little bit of confusion about it being 1911 or the Luger P08. We'll get into that in just a minute. But over the course of this fighting, the German garrison commander thought there were far more Americans than there in fact were. He'd been sending up men repeatedly to take out what was initially believed to be a small amount of Americans, and his men just kept on getting killed. I've heard it described that Alvin York actually was uh, shooting the German soldiers as though they were turkeys. And when hunting turkeys, you want to shoot the one farthest in the back and then work your way up to the front. Reason for that is if you shoot the turkey in the front first, they scatter. Humans will do the same thing. If you take out the lead man, they'll go to ground, generally speaking. And Alvin York, being a turkey hunter, just did that. And it was very effective. Again, he single-handedly killed, uh, it's, it's stated, at least 20 is typically how you'll you'll find it worded. Um, exact number seems to be, therefore, unknown. The repeated failure to uh, dislodge the Americans led the German garrison commander to surrender, thinking he must be facing a superior force, which, in fact, he was facing York and seven other men total. Uh, it, had, again, started out as 17, and nine were killed outright, leaving eight. So... Definitely no small feat. He would be awarded the Medal of Honor and promoted to sergeant. A movie in, I believe, 1940, if I'm mistaken on that, I'll, I'll post a correction, but I believe it was 1940 that the movie Sergeant York came out, and this is where the controversy over what gun he used mostly stems from. Again, we're going to start with pistols. In the movie, Sergeant York used a Luger pistol parabellum model of 1908, where it seems in real life he used a Colt model of 1911, or, you know, a World War I 1911. It may not have specifically been a Colt. But let's take a look at shooting both of these. We'll start with the Luger and then do the 1911. Now, as far as which pistol he actually used, this one seems to be pretty straightforward. Uh, at the time, when filming a fighting scene in a movie with pistols, the 1911 does not cycle blanks very well, especially these older, you know, World War I examples, which is what they would have had on hand at the time. The Luger cycles 9mm blanks quite well, and that is, from my understanding, the only reason that they used a Luger in the movie. 
This has led to other debate since then. Uh, it doesn't seem like at the time there was any real debate over whether he used a Luger or a 1911. It, it seems pretty solidly confirmed that it was in fact a 1911, but since then I've seen the argument that while well, he could have picked up a pistol off of a fallen German and it could have been a Luger, and yes, this is this is entirely possible, and he was a corporal, and I'm, I'm not 100% on whether or not corporals were typically given sidearms during World War I. And there's also the part where the 1911 was actually outnumbered in the field massively by the 1917 model of revolver, but it's also then the counter-argument is, well, his commanding officer probably did have a 1911 and he could have taken it off of his body after he had been killed. Again, it seems like this debate is only because of what is shown in the movie, it seems pretty straightforward that he had a 1911 and he killed six of the 20 plus Germans he is credited with dispatching with his 1911. Now the rifles is where it gets a little more complicated. Again, people are very passionate about which one they think he had and there are valid arguments for both. I'm going to try and look at both of these arguments logically. I do have my own opinions on this, but the rifles in question are these uh, the Eddie Stone or American Enfield model of 1917. My example here is a Winchester or the Springfield model of 1903. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot those and again in the order that I introduced them. So model 1917, then model of 1903. So with rifles, in this particular story, there isn't really a satisfying resolution. People just cannot seem to agree. Again, there are convincing arguments for both. I am in the 1917 camp. The reason for this is pretty straightforward. York's unit was issued 1917 rifles. That is a matter of historical fact. It is documented. They were issued 1917s. It gets muddied because the 1903, again, is what was used in the movie, and 1903s were used by American troops, um, again, outnumbered by the 1917, just like with uh, the pistols, the 1911 was outnumbered by the 1917 revolver. But again, the revolver doesn't come up in any of these arguments. Regardless, the 1917 would have definitely been issued to him initially. And where the argument comes in, some people, uh, first, this first argument, I, I'm going to go ahead and call bullcrap on, because it is that the 1903 is more accurate than the 1917. That's kind of an eye of the beholder thing. Is it more accurate because it was machined tighter and therefore is it is possible for it to draw a more accurate pattern? Or is it more accurate based on in the hands of a human being where I would argue the 1917 is more accurate because this peep sight configuration is a lot better and less complicated than the you know very complex and strange sight system on the original model of 1903. Both of them are good rifles, but the accuracy argument seems fairly invalid to me. Argument number two. To my understanding, Alvin York has stated in an interview his 1903 is what he was using. That seems like it would shut down any arguments for the 1917, but again, it is documented that his unit was issued 1917s. Why would this be? It is entirely possible that he didn't really know the difference. Not calling out Sergeant Alvin York on this. This is just a fact. A lot of soldiers at the time had not really used military weapons in any circumstances and had just been introduced to them like months before they were using them in the field. He could have just been saying my 1903 because that's what everybody called their rifle. Who knows? That, that is not something that can be proven or disproven. And again, you will see arguments for and against this. Just visceral arguments about this. I've, I've actually seen people get pretty nasty about it. And I did find a pretty uh, convincing argument uh, in an article for it being the 1917. That again, 
is kind of the, the theory that I buy into because why would he, uh, you know, get rid of a perfectly good service rifle for a different one? Again, especially if uh, the accuracy argument is just something that pretty much other people are throwing around. I haven't seen this actually attributed to him having said it. So it's an interesting topic. Um, something that has fascinated me since I first started getting into Guns of the First World War was the story of Alvin York, and then the arguments about which gun he may have used. I I am a fan of all of these guns, honestly. I mean, you got the two best pistols of World War One, arguably, but you know, I would say the 1911 kind of takes the cake. There's a reason that it stuck around for so long, whereas the Luger was you know replaced by World War Two. 1911s were used in American service clear until the 80s, and then you know in smaller numbers, well into the 2010s. 1903, one of the more famed American rifle designs, but another thing about the argument of which gun is better, American soldiers generally preferred the 1917. There was actually a push to have the 1917 adopted as the standard after World War I, and the 1903 was kept around basically because of special interests, not because of practicality. So at the time, a lot of money had been sunk into keeping the 1903 as the American battle rifle. Uh, the NRA had a hand in this as well. There's a lot of complicated things going on. Not all of it that I'm going to get into. We're actually getting, you know, right about to what I think is going to be the end of this video. I just thought, you know, it's a topic that was deserving of its own segment, looking at it specifically. Again, it's just something that's fascinated me ever since I first got into it. And I'm sure there are more analytical videos on this topic, and they're probably fairly easily found. This is a well-known story. Again, a movie was made about it in, again, I think it was 1940. Anyway, yeah, I think that about sums it up. And let me know which, uh, which rifle do you think he used? Do you have a argument for why you think he may have used the Luger instead of the 1911 that I missed? Any additional information is welcome. Just leave it in the comments and I will probably respond. I'm usually pretty on top of getting back to comments. Unless you're a jerk about it. If you're a jerk about it, I'm either going to call you out or ignore you. I've been getting a little bit more of that lately. As the channel has been growing, we've definitely been seeing some more trolls coming out. Uh, which has led to some kind of funny interactions in the comment sections. Just go back through some of the recent videos and you might find some uh, humorous troll arguments. But anyway, with that, hope you all enjoyed the video. It's been Thomas Great Northwest Weaponry, and I will see you all next time.